Right, if you still with us or you just joined us, you still on to Enterprise on morning, reaching you from Enterprise Television. Let's get to our main conversation. The Defense Headquarters DHQ on Monday issued a strong warning against calls for a military coup, labeling such actions as treason on the Nigerian law. The response followed a viral video in which individuals advocated a military takeover. The Defense headquarters emphasize that security agencies are tasked with addressing any attempts to disrupt constitutional governance. And furthermore, it clarified rumors about the appointment of a new chief of army staff, stating that Lieutenant General Tawid Labaja, the current chief of the army, is on annual leave and no active replacement has been appointed. Very true. And the military reassured the public of its commitment to democracy and loyalty to President Bola Ahmed Chinembo's administration. The defense headquarters also discouraged the spread of misinformation, urging a media outlet to verify news before publication. Let's get to have a conversation with us today. Doing that is a barrister advisor, Philip Barrister, a law public affairs analyst. Good morning to you, Barrister. Good morning. Thank Good you morning. so very much for your time. Thank you. All right, so let's get into having a conversation about this um, particular issue. I'd love you to tell us what you think about about this, especially as regards um, a couple of misinformations we've had. I know we did talk about a replacement here in the studios, um, and now the army is saying that there's no replacement to, to, to that. So how do we make sense of all of this? Well, uh, those who are calling for military takeover, first of all, it's not lawful to, to do so because um, we have a democracy to preserve and entrench. No matter how difficult things have become, a military incursion or military intervention or the call for save is not a solution to the problem. You know the problem, those who are calling for it did not, maybe they did not witness military regime or maybe they are just being cheeky or they just want to get back at the government that have, you know, turn their body, spirit, and soul to a treacherous experience. Huh. Okay? So that is that is just mischievous. It is wrong to, to so do. But there's something about information. The more you keep pouring a particular state of affairs or information, military takeover, 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 words are seeds, they begin to germinate. Even the military themselves that are saying, don't say that it is wrong. Is it? No sooner than later, it begins to grow in their minds. Mm. So that is why it's a dangerous thing to do. Citizens should stay clear away from it. It is treasonable. It is treasonable. So it shouldn't be part of what should be under consideration. Okay, sorry to cut you short at this point. Now, if we go down history, in the year 1983, December, we saw um, where the rumors about military could take coming up. And then, um, Muhammad Buhari overthrew Shiro Shagari and the rumors came to reality but it was a bloodless one mm. and you saying that words are seeds are you saying it in a way it could actually come to reality in this present it will get into people's head even if it will not get into the heads of the the highest echelon mm. it might get into the heads of the full soldiers mm. who are less schooled mm. okay and they too can take over I know we've seen African countries where it is the full soldiers that orchestrated the coup and forced the senior soldiers to take over the role on that one point. Right. After which they were caught martial, some of them dismissed, some of them became rebels, ran away. Right. But they achieved what they wanted to achieve. Take over, push the senior uh, officers to go take over on that one point and thereafter resign or run away. It's possible. So it is not, you don't say that kind of a thing under any kind of condition. You don't, because it is dangerous. If we have a military arrangement now, you will not like your existence. Because everything will be by force. Forget about the fact that they can easily do projects, they can easily by fiat, ask something to be done immediately, because there will be no legislative argument, or the constitution is suspended under military rule. So there will be no consideration, no bottleneck, no, uh, you, you understand. But in the long run, in the long run, you will notice that you will not also make progress with that speed. Hmm. 
we've seen it now. I mean, in our own uh, our country, part of why we are here is because of military regime and the contribution of civil rule that have been so backward and unprogressive. You understand? So, um, the other day, the first of all, we know that the the man is dead. I mean, Taru Lagbaja that is dead. And from there, this call, it started in a pardon. It started in a pardon where the military were on a convoy, they ran into a traffic by a marketplace. Then people came out and started asked, telling them, hmm. giving them orders to go and take over government in Abuja. You understand? This is uncautionable. Citizens should not do that. Military regime is not the best. It's not the type. The first military coup took place in Nigeria in January 15, 1966. Yeah. And from that day to date, this country has no known peace. You understand? So we keep having that. It is, it is, it is a bad thing to consider. To also think that Nigeria, Nigerian president is the chairman of ECOWAS. That is, you know, fighting every day to see that the countries that have been overthrown already are restored and there's no progress in sight. You know, the last of which is Niger. There's no progress in sight. So I don't think it's the right thing to do. Perhaps what, uh, what the citizens should do is to call out their president, call out their governors, call out their local government chairman, their, their, their legislators, their representatives from their senatorial district to the House of Assembly um, uh, uh, district down to all that represents them and demand for good, good governance. Okay, now, um, looking at um, the statement, and it said it's advised most organizations to verify information before releasing. Now, at this point, I'm going to say the media is playing a crucial role in the role numbers that are being um, sent out. No, the media, the media is a point of information now. I mean, the media, the, the media is a point. Do you know how the organized school in Nigeria yeah. see how they do it? In those days, once they took over the seat of power, subdue the president, the vice, senate president, house of they put them under house arrest. Hmm? They will not move. The soldiers will be there with them and their families. They will lock them up. No phone calls. No nothing. Then they will have to deploy another set of soldiers who will go sometimes on Mufti to all the radio stations in Nigeria and all the TV stations. As they step in, they will take over this program. Three of us will step out. Three of them will line up. All the radio stations. And at the same time, at the same time, fellow Nigerians, that is the opening statement. They were announced on the radio themselves. Suspend the constitution mm. by word of mouth. No assembly, no agreement. Mm. Then, the next thing they will do is, once they are done, they will take the head of the session away. They will take all the necessary people that can influence anything to the contrary. They will take them away and lock them. And the next day, they will inaugurate Supreme Military Council. From there, they will set up their leadership structure and take over Sorok. You understand? Suspend the Constitution, suspend National Assembly. And they will start to run things by pronouncement. They can call the CBN government now to go and bring 300 billion now. They will bring it. So that is how they operate. So, is that the solution to this problem we have? It doesn't look like the solution to me. So, people should stay away from saying things like that. I know so many people do it as a result of ignorance. So many people also do it as a result of um, uh, mischief. You understand? Just the same way they go out there, campaign for a leader they are not sure of, vote for him, he will come. He will, he will assume office and alter their lives forever. That's where we are now. 
Now, as, 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 as much as, of course, we do not advocate for a coup or desire it for any reason, I, I would love us to be um, very pragmatic here and look at things more realistically. Uh, nature abhors vacuum. When push comes to shore, for the worst happens. Now, let me, you referred to 1966, which, of course, was the first uh, coup we, we had in, in Nigeria. Now, according to that particular statement, it, it was stated that the coup was planned because, according to the major, so the men at the helm of affairs were running Nigeria aground with the corrupt ways. Ministers under them were living flamboyant lifestyles and looting public funds at the expense of ordinary citizens. When nature, nature abhors vacuum, and this is basically what, what, what happened. Now, with what we have in Nigeria right now, which of course is very sympathetical to um, what was um, labeled against them, you know, back in the days in 1966, don't you think that naturally the condition we have is on its own calling for what we do not desire? As at that time, that 1966, the, the reason given now wasn't false, it was true. The ministers, the civil leaders under a democratic dispensation had no empathy for the citizens. They were looting the country, buying cars, buying houses, you know, lavishing the money that is meant for the collective good of all. That was the um, that was the circumstance, the situation then, uh -huh. it was. That is the situation today. Uh -huh. The president is buying private jet, buying, jet, buying this, buying that. Going on vacation. It costs 400,000 naira now to buy fuel for one month. Four weeks. In Nigeria, if you are driving a small car, if you're driving an SUV, it costs more than 400000 to put your car on the road to go to work, to pay salary if you own a business, to earn salary and take 400 out if you are working. And the reality is what it is. Mm. But what is different between now and that time was that that time we had interested military okay. uh, coup and military administration. Okay, so it happened. Mm -hmm. Now, military took over, led Nigeria intermittently. Civilian came in Canada up to 1999 when they finally yield to this democracy that is now 24 years old or 25 years old. Okay, so if you draw from hindsight, okay, and look at it properly, would you now say military come take over? Because doing your regime, you did better, or you now you were Nigeria better than you was not. You understand? So that is the difference. We have a confluence of experience. Okay, we stand in between our past and our present. So that experience is not a worthwhile experience. Otherwise, we will not be calling for another one at this time. So it's been a steady decline. Whether military whether civilian mm. we've had a steady decline in leadership and in development of the country even when it got worse when we had more resources so you now discover that this is all about leadership we don't have the right leadership whether the military or i mean even after we the way you handed over mm -hmm. The excellent chairman took it over too. From 1999, he took it over up until when did we have the first real civil schooled president, Pav yeah. and uh, no. uh, uh, Good luck, John. Uh, good luck, yeah. Every other person is either a school leaver uh, or people with complicated uh, educational histories that are unverifiable and unrelatable. So we've gone, we've, gone, we've, we've gone through far to begin to consider. I understand the situation, the uh, picture you painted. Mm. It, 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 it's right. But it has never been the way out. 
So we should not make the mistake for calling for military takeover. Under the guys is the wrong way to go about leadership. You cannot find solution. And you will face international sanctions. Many countries will boycott you in business, in the economy, in the social side. And at the end of the day, you will just find that uh, it's not is is a very expensive way to go in the circumstance under reference. What we should do is to continue to agitate, agitate for for as long as the situation changes. <laughs> for as long as the situation changes, yes, that is if there's hope, it will change. Yes. No, the, the change is uh, is <laughs> very imminent at every point in time. Right. If you decide hmm. that things should change, they, they should change. Okay. If you decide, yes. You see, because, see, we're not pushing forth. We're not pushing, we're not pushing enough. And I told the policemen uh, just a few days ago, when we went to release uh, the people that were arrested at the Lucky Toll Gates, I told the policemen, I said, this is a video I did four years ago, three years ago, a day after the um first commemoration of the lucky toga yes, shooting yes. this is a video i did on it i played it for them they say no that if we allow them then they will cause another problem i said which problem the first problem was caused by the military mm. they are the ones who want to shoot people these people now that you arrested that were here to build which problem they went to lay ritz anywhere in the world where people die so remember then you go to lay it anywhere so it is not an offense known to law that you have gone to lay it anywhere they say no they should have gone to the cemetery i said what cemetery the police and the military took the bodies when they shot them oh. which cemetery so they finally released them to us but what i'm what i'm heading at is that we have to keep that agitation on well, that is the only way recognized by the constitution. Okay. Military takeover is not recognized by the constitution. Violence is not recognized by the constitution. Protests is recognized by the constitution. So if you want to change things for good, right. you must do it the right way. He that comes to equity must come with hands. All right. Now, now let's let's look at this from another vantage point because it's very important that we look at this holistically uh, both domestically and international and um the the whole crux of the matter is ensuring that there's good governance in the system when every citizen you know is is happy let's take a look at china for example um it's a democracy with a quotation but the western world have called it a democracy a dictatorship that works I don't know, a democratic China, dictatorship China, that works. China is not a democracy. It's China a democracy. Yeah, but it, it's not military. So, 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 what do we call uh, call it? Uh, <laughs> because uh, my question basically is: Is democracy the problem? Is it is it the issue that we have that has that has made it well, difficult for people to see good governance in a country like ours? Well, if you ask me, I, I will say that democracy is not for every country. Democracy is not for every country. Democracy is so academic that if you have devious people, if you have devious people in your country, democracy will not work in that country. Democracy strives on transparency, honesty, and patriotism. Huh. And if you have a collective of people who do not have that as their core value, you will suffer out that democracy. That's what is going on here. But you see this kind of Dubai monarchy mm -hmm. where the monarchs believe in the collective good of all so that they will not allow you to come into the Kedah if you are devious to lead. They are able to push forth for the good of all. That's if the man at the top understands what good governance is. That's what I'm saying. It's no, that's what, that's, what, that's what I have in the, the, the Arab Emirates. The people leading them are few. And these few people, they are doing it for the collective good of all. You understand? So, this is a kind of government that have upstaged democracy. That is touted to be the, the, the one that everybody comes out to agree on issues. 
You understand? So if you ask me, I'll, I, I'll, I'll see it. I know democracy in very civilized countries mm. where there are checks and mechanism, where a president can say something and the judiciary will knock it off. Yeah. Just like in the US. Mm. When Trump came in, his tra he, there are a lot of issues he raised and were knocked off by the Supreme Court. That those, 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 those cannot be under consideration. Mm. You understand? Mm. The, from immigration to very strong issues on health and all that. They were knocked off because if they are allowed to open the floodgate for a very strange system to happen in the country. So in that kind of democracy, or in that kind of place, where we are saying, let America be great again, where the aspiration and vision of the citizenry is for the upliftment and the growth of America, if you take on democracy there to work, but here, where people's minds, spirit, and soul are battered, mm. And where patriotism is not on their list, otherwise they will not be defecating on their expressway. It's not on their list. Patriotism is not on their list. Otherwise, they will not be throwing such water in the gutter anywhere they see anyhow. They, they stop a bus or stop somebody who alight from the bus and start to urinate there. Could become as just to the other person. It cannot be democracy, it cannot be um, a patriotic uh, uh, distance. So what if we can assemble a country mm. where First, that is the way the change will happen is first you educate the citizen. You have a critical mass. If you have a critical mass, if you have very educated citizens, citizenry, you will lower the cost of maintaining population. They will not overload infrastructure. Start from there. Then begin to build infrastructure alongside human capital. Mm. So then you can project. But in this country, it's not a priority. The president says he's going to take a loan now, 500 uh, to, to take care of education. Education that parents have taken over already. Parents have taken over that sphere, primary education and secondary education. The government is not doing anything in that regard. People are in their area money to take care of it. So that money, they're going, they going to get that money and loot it. That's only what they want to do. Okay, thank you, so President. Where is this country heading to? <laughs> Okay, Vice Chair, as a fellow, let's um, call it a wrap. So, what's your parting shot, and how is the best way we could come out of this? And if you have to advise the current administration, what will be your advice? Yes, my my advocacy this morning, or my intervention this morning, is not because I like the government in power. I'm saying there should be no military takeover, not because I endorse this government. Mm -hmm. Let's make that clear. I cannot endorse this this ineptitude. Okay, but I'm saying that. Despite the fact that they have not gotten it right, and they seem not to ever get it right, military takeover is not the solution. It's not the solution to the extent that is unconstitutional. Number one, two, it's not recognized by even our conventions that at some point when the civilians are not doing well, military should come and take over and do a little handover. It's not. <laughs> it's not. It, it was forced and forced on us after it happened first in Togo. In uh, that's I think uh, was it in uh, nineteen? Is it nineteen sixty six? No, not nineteen sixty six. I long I can't remember, but I know it first happened in Togo in Africa. Mm. But where we are now is that this government and the citizens have a role to play. You see that the government changed its course, okay? Make life bearable, provide for the citizens, or the citizens must occupy and force government with a demand. Mm. To, to bring lasting peace and solution and development in the country. All right. Um, just before we call it a wrap, just like um, my uh, church did, did ask, I would love to have um, your 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 sh your short on this particular issue, especially the military once more. Um, when there's um, no there's there's regional apathy for the military. Some some segments of our our country are no longer interested in joining the military any longer. You know, they see it like a no-go area. Now, how do you think the military can rejig itself so as they can, you know, get to see this love they used to see uh, across the Nigeria? Yeah, is to promote equity around the country. If your policy, your appointment, everything you do, you know, shows that you marginalize a region 
or regions. Those regions or those places will widen their aspiration for secession. That's what it is. Just like you said before, that nature of poor vacuum. Yes. So, if you do not make your administration all inclusive and give everyone a sense of belonging, many regions will tell you they are not interested in what you call one Nigeria. They are not interested in your military, they are not interested in your institutions, and they will boycott it. And when they boycott it, it will widen their resolve to push for secession. And secession. Secession all over the world. Once the seed is so, it does not matter how long it takes. One day, in the course of things, they will succeed. Hmm. So what you can do to prevent it is to close up the resolve. That individual resolution and that um, seed sown already is to dissuade it from germinating. Mm. dissuade it from becoming a behemoth prone the branches if possible cut it down suppress its growth then breach that gap with your policy people will naturally find no need to keep asking for a division mm. but when you in your appointment you focus on one you know tribe you your development your projects you focus on one region and all that you are killing the country the more even when the constitution is there in the constitution section 14 subsection 3 says the federal government must harness you know carry everybody along create a country that will, we we take the consideration of everyone in the scheme of things that is very important. Very, very true. Thank you so, so very Thank much. Um, yesterday, um, uh, King Charles was in Australia with his wife. And while he was, you know, having a sit-down meeting and uh, having a chat with, you know, some of uh, the people there, a senator, a servant current senator, you know, rose up and said, you are not my king. You know, and this, of course, uh, with boils, boils to the issue of um, ensuring that governance, you know, is for everybody and um, a country should reach a referendum on how it should be managed better. Well, that's our show for today. And I'd love to truly say thank you for being part of it. Uh, by Stefan Sofeli, thank you thank so much you. For, for being here. And to you, you've watched, you've streamed. I would love to say thank you. But please do well to uh, visit us for these and more. You can always find us at Enterprise uh, TV News. Com. And also, you may like, comment, and follow us on all our social media platforms at Enterprise TV7. I am Henry E. Gribike. And I'm Shema Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Okay.